Pastor Ndola Jibi, I work with I lecture and work in University of New York. And so today, we want to look at water analysis. Some of our uh, members in a research work in Power State Laboratory. And so today, as a preamble, uh, we like to note that water is essential to life. And about 97% of the Earth's surface is water. Less than 3% of Earth's uh, total supply of water is fresh water. And polar ice and inaccessible groundwater makes half of this 3% that we're talking about here. In the developing world, and also in developed countries, water is becoming progressively polluted. Every form of water seems to have its own uh, contaminant on a very challenging way. So the source of water includes industry, sewage, treatment plant, household, decaying plant and animals, litters from cigarette butts, pouring of oil down sinks, and all the rest. So all of this um, account for the contamination that we have in water. So these are washed through storm water system into drains and they run off into creeks and rivers and eventually the ocean. So when we say water is becoming progressively polluted, that is what we mean. And uh, everyone can help reduce water pollution. You and I can help reduce water pollution by following the Environmental Protection Act of 1994 that adopts an environmental stewardship approach that all of us are responsible for the pollution we have and that if we take a cue, then we can have better water supply. So our goal includes ensuring our waste does not end up in our water waste. And so we can see how progressively water is being uh, polluted. So by way of introduction, water quality describes the condition of the water that we have at hand and uh, it has to do with the, 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 the source and the purpose for which we intend to use it. So the quality reflects its physical, chemical and microbiological characteristics. And so we want to match that very closely with the suitability for the intended purpose. Water can be used for different purposes and we're going to look at that briefly before we go into talking about analysis of uh, water. So is the water for drinking? Is it for swimming? Is it for washing? Is it for industrial purposes? So this water we want to analyze. Is it for any of these or some other uses? So this picture here shows someone who is drinking the water. He actually needs his water drinkable. He wants it to be table water. And then this person is here needed for their domestic uh, uh, use. And so use of water, uh, industrial, recreation, home, power, agriculture. What do you need water for? So as an analyst, I want to analyze the water and give the parameters that we need. At this point, we want to talk about water-specific guidelines. There are some guidelines by organizations like a World Health Organization, Canadian and Australian Drinking Water Guidelines are also available. They talk about, for instance, E. coli should not be detected in a 100 ml sample of drinking water. So for every 100 ml of uh, drinking water, we don't want to see not even one uh, E. coli at all detected in there. And if it is, then immediate action has to be taken to minimize human risk. And the equally we are talking about here, we are not even streamlining the source, fecal or not. All we are saying is we don't want to see equally in our drinking water. So specifications based on all these guidelines are based on realistic data, e.g. equally are commonly found in the face of warm-blooded animals in high numbers. Therefore, their presence in any water source indicate that the presence of fecal contamination and potential enteric pathogens are available in that water source. So water analysis therefore is premised on realistic backgrounds and these guidelines by these organizations are also so uh, presented, are also of serious uh, consideration. And so when we want to find out in very comprehensive microbial and microbiological tests, we want to look at the uh, biochemical characteristics of these organisms 
and then use that to design procedure or protocol for them so that the water can actually be said to the pure submission or report. So now let's talk about sources of water, face water, like we have in lakes, streams, river, pond, and ocean. Then we have ground water too, shallow well, deep well, or boreholes. Then we have rain or storm water. So this picture here just describes uh, the water that we have around us. The water types of water. We can classify water to mesh water or saline water based on dissolved salt. In, like in the oceans, we have saline water. And uh, we don't want uh, saline water. Nobody likes to take that because of the risk it poses. So all this calcium, magnesium in, in water makes them hard. And so when those are not there, we call it uh, soft uh, water. So water quality indicators. What are water quality indicators? Biological, as in do we have algae, bacteria in that water? Then physical water indicator. The temperature of the water, the turbidity, clarity, color, salinity, suspended solid, etc. These are uh, physical indicators. The chemical indicators, the pH of the water, the dissolved oxygen, biological oxygen, demand, nutrients, including nitrogen and phosphorus, organic and inorganic compounds, including toxicants. If all of these are permanent, then we're going to raise uh, an hydro, so to say. Then, aesthetic indicator, does it smell, does it taint, color, floating matters? Then, radioactivity, do we have alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, emission, or particles in there, okay? So, indicator of water quality can be physicochemical indicators, result, gene, pH, temperature, and salinity. Then, and uh, we have insecticide, herbicide, or metals present in that uh, water. Then biological indicators, uh, the fauna and flora in the waterway, and also presence of macro invertebrates and benthic algae in the water. So at this point, I'd like to say that the source of the water will alert a, 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 an analyst as to what to expect and what to analyze for, what to pay more attention to in that analysis. So habitat indicator as we have here, ranging or riparian and in-stream habitat, are there falling trees in the waterway, okay, are there scoring and bank erosions, you know, into the water and all of that. So all this information can help an analyst, you know, design the analytical uh, protocols to cover, you know, detecting most of these uh, things that can be of concern to us. So then the flow indicator is also important. Changes to flow causing aquatic ecosystem degradation can also affect water quality. And so, a, 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 an analyst, we need to put that into consideration. Government sometimes creates river basin or regional aquifers, and then this can affect the, uh, the, the water quality. And so, the analyst must have to also read and capture all of this. Um, environment. So some environmental problems and contaminants that we have by way of a, a theoretical presentation include as in when fertilizers are used extensively in that environment, you're going to have enough of phosphate and nitrates in the water and this has to be detected. Then our pesticides and herbicides too are also what can give us concerns because they present some dimethylamine salt, paraquat, glyphosate, etc. Then, uh, in domestic uh, operations, dishwashing detergent can also present some contaminants, and this includes surface, test surface testers and fatty uh, alcohols. So, this picture here shows us that even in rainwater, with all these uh, fumes and uh, dust going up there, rainwater can actually still bring all of this down and uh, causing uh, the pollution we've been talking about. So contaminants. Because as an analyst, we actually want to present our results, picking the salient contaminants to see whether the levels at which the 
appear in that water is what we need or not. Surface water contaminants. Fresh water is a uh, scarce and valuable resource, one that can easily be contaminated, and that is a fact. Once contaminated, the extent to which it is that we consider polluted. So fresh water is difficult and expensive to restore because if all of these fertilizer uh, based uh, organics are into the water, they enforce to now remove them, detect them, remove them, is quite expensive. And more expensive if we don't remove them and we consume them or use them for whatever purposes and they, they cause a breakdown, whether in health or in some other sense. So these pollutants have different environmental effects. Excess nutrients, for instance, may result in harmful algal bloom and hypoxia, both in river and coastal seas. And once there's hypoxia, the animals in the rivers die and a lot of stench so wells on that the ground are all in cracks and spaces between rocks and sediments. Most companies actually uh, explore this for their water production. So most of water comes from precipitation. And when it rains or snows, and soil becomes saturated, water percolates downwards to aquifers and replenish the groundwater supply. So groundwater contamination of all when pollutants such as gasoline, pesticide, herbicide, and all this stuff, all these uh, detergents uh, flow down into uh, the shallow well or even the boreholes and uh, causing contamination. So as analysts, we must be forced to be able to detect uh, this. And it can also be found in that. Then pesticide, herbicide, insecticide, oil and gasoline, also products, paintiners, to remove chemicals can be found uh, there. And so our design must capture all of that. So other compounds such as nitrate and nitrite, volatile organic compounds, Chloride, fluoride, and dissolved salt, cyanide, sulfate, with the nuclides can be found in borehole water or underground water. And so the analysis must be comprehensive enough to capture all of that. So going to rainwater, rainwater harvesting is currently being practiced in southern Nigeria. Okay, the, the growing awareness of water conservation and stormwater runoff issues and the desire for self-sufficiency in water supply has made uh, so many communities to look towards rainwater as their source of uh, water supply. And but the contaminants must also be... Uh, so the consumption of contaminated water from storage tanks, the tanks that uh, this uh, rainwater or any other water that is put is also important. And the uh, wind-blown decks, leaves, Thicker droppings and all of that are common with uh, rainwater. And they can uh, put, uh, see the roofing sheet here, the material with which it is, it is made. This looks like asbestos. And uh, as water washes through this asbestos roof or zinc roof, whether Cameroon or whatever, or rusted or clean, it gets into uh, the container with which it is contained, uh, collected. And, uh, and with that, the quality of the water affected. And an analyst has to consider all these things and uh, give you a robust analysis. Wastewater is a polluted form of waste of water generated from uh, rainwater runoffs and human activities. It's also called sewage. And so the contaminants in this are also generated from materials and chemicals washed into storm drains from street to street, gutters, neighborhood, industrial sites, parking lots, and construction sites. So all the metallic uh, stuff here and there actually get into uh, storm water. So improper disposal of used oil, which include oil leakages from cars, contribute signal to storm water pollution. And then fires on a uh, bitumen, and as water, rain water falls there, everything swept into the source where people collect them for whatever use they want to uh, put the water, such as copper, lead, and zinc, hydrocarbons from petrol and oil, pesticide, pathogenic bacteria and viruses, trace organics such as phthalates and surfactants are always present in 
most of the different sources. I imagine what the floor here will be. And then you can see uh, this uh, local oil industry. And you can imagine the spillage and water washing, all those things off. So that's what we're talking about. That water quality is very important. And the role of a public analyst safeguarding the health of the populace in every community is also very important. People just buy water and drink. Village authorities are actually trying, but uh, how much can they do? So you can also see uh, what we have here, actually very faulty. You can see tires, you know, heaped up here. They can be recycled. And of course, all of these find their way into our different sources of water. And uh, no matter how we have treated it, if we don't uh, go to all lengths, to ensure that what this has contributed to our water is handled. Whatever the use to which we are putting the water, whether drinking, swimming, uh, with culture, a lot of things can be recycled. And all of this impinge on our health and our economy.